Hello all, welcome to another session. In this session, we are going to be dealing about the phyla, the Aschelmenthus and the Annelida. Now, what is Aschelmenthus? Helminthus, as I have already mentioned, is a worm. Ask is round, okay? So these phyla, this phyla contains something called the round worms. Now, why are they called the round worms? Is because they look round when a cross section is taken, okay? That is why they are called round worms, okay? Helminthus is worm, ask is round. Now, what is the one feature of ask helminthus is that they are pseudo coelomates, okay? They have something called a false coelom. These are also triploblastic and the coelom is formed by the split in the mesoderm of the germ layer of the embryo, okay? So, when I say the coelom of this is pseudo coelom, the coelom, the actual coelom that is formed by the splitting of the mesoderm is filled in by this tissue called the mesenchymal tissue. Now this mesenchymal tissue is responsible for the filling of the coelom and therefore the uh, animals are called pseudo coelomates. Now what are the characteristics of the animals of Aschelminthus? These I have already mentioned are round worms. They are actually bigger than the members of the plat helminthus. These are exclusively almost uh, parasitic in nature and they uh, bring about an agricultural veterinary havoc, okay, if they are contaminated, if water sources and agricultural fields are contaminated with these worms and these worms are passed on from one organism to the surroundings through the excreta itself, okay, so the Aschelminthus members are almost very, very um, dangerous parasites per se. Therefore, the Aschelminthus members uh, involve a host and a parasitic relationship. Therefore, their digestive tracts as usual are not very completely digested. Okay. Now, uh, these Aschelminthus have an outer cuticle or a syncytial epidermis. Now, this is a very important characteristic because since these organisms are exclusively sometimes parasitic, they need to dwell in the host organism's stomach which is mostly an acidic environment, stomach and the intestines. They have varying pH. Therefore, they need to overcome all of it which is why they have a syncytial epidermis meaning they have a layers of you know cuticle and the epidermal cells which are protective in nature. The Aschelminthus body is thin and long and as I have already mentioned circular in cross section and the uh, syncytium covers the softer parts of the inner body. Now the inner body has an, uh, an you know incompletely developed digestive tract and the mouth area of the uh, Aschelminthus members contain something called the papillae. Now these papillae are thigmotic in function that is to say they uh, respond to touch and they also contain a lot of other uh, you know phasmids. Phasmids are those uh, uh, organs that are uh, responsible for glandular secretions, glandulosecretory functions okay. They are present on the opposite end of the mouth. Papillae and uh, there are uh, also something called the uh, uh, fast media okay so th this actually forms the basis of classification in as helminthus members and uh, th since they are parasitic in nature the one characteristic about parasites is that they reproduce in large numbers okay so there are many segments in the as helminthus body that is full of fertile eggs that are later to be fertilized by the males okay the female body and actually there is something called the gynecophoric canals in females in which the male ovum resides okay that is how large a female is compared to the male members in the members of this phylum okay so the Aschelminthus are largely reproducive and that is one of you know it contributes to one of the advantages of these dwelling species now the classification of the Aschelminthus is a fast media and fast media now as i've already mentioned and as the names suggest fast media which are um, you know they are glandular secretory glandulosecretory in function the a fast media members have no fast media in them okay and they are again they are not as harmfully parasitic as the members of the fast media now the one of the examples of the members of a fast media is Trituris, Tritinella, 
etc. Okay, these two are the classic examples of the members of a first media. Now, coming to the members of first media, I have already mentioned these. Uh, this phylum is an exclusively parasitic member containing phylum. Therefore, there are many, many parasitic worms that are commonly found in human as well that are under the class first media. And uh, obviously, these members contain the first media that are glandular secretory. And the examples include Ancylostoma, which is commonly called a hookworm, Bucheraria, Bucheraria, which is commonly called the funereal worm, and the classic example of the Aschelminthus members is the Ascaris, Ascaris lumbricoides, which dwells in the intestine of the organisms of humans basically they are called roundworms when you have roundworms in your uh, you know intestine you do not digest food properly or even if you are to digest food properly they are not given to the body as the as helminthum the ascaris members they dwell in your intestine and they absorb all that okay now the ascarian members also include you know multiple larval stages in their sexual life cycle and since they are uh, host dependent because they are parasitic they have multiple vegetative and you know sexual stages inside their hosts or outside they usually have their vegetative phases outside the host and inside the host are the sexual phase okay so they reproduce basically in the host organism they they need the host organism to carry out their sexual reproduction so this was about the ascaris uh, classification now the ancylostoma or the hookworm is so called because the mouth area has a lot of hooks okay so what these hooks do is they cling on to your um, uh, you know the genital area okay near the uh, uh, genito anal parts okay and these are contracted by lack of hygiene okay there is um, you know characters are characterized by the um, you know itching in area you know discomfort in sitting and all that these are most commonly seen in rural people than in urban people because there is not much stress on the hygiene as well okay and they even move barefooted sometimes since these worms have a hook they easily hook onto the cuticle of the foot and they get into the bloodstream and therefore are carried into those areas that are affected by these worms and then butcher area butcher area is also called a filarial worm now why there is a species of the filarial worm called the butcher area bancrofti okay this which area bancrofti is actually native to africa this causes something called the elephantiasis you might have heard of this disease called elephantiasis where the uh, limbs of the person who is affected by the butcher area you know swells up it is due to the blockage of the lymph node in the limbs okay by these butcher area worm eggs and their the worms as well okay so what happens is they block the lymph node okay once the lymph nodes are blocked there is swelling okay because there's accumulation of the lymph and there's no space for the lymph to drain out and therefore they accumulate in the limbs making the limbs look you know fat and swollen up that is why they call the elephant legs or elephantiasis disease and the ascaris as i have commonly i have mentioned is common among children you know they ingest um soil outside soil when they are playing around so this is one of the ways that ascaris gets into the uh, body okay and they dwell there it is pretty easy to get rid of ascaris but the filarium ancylostoma and oh, oh, you know uh, yeah which area ancylostoma they are pretty uh, you know hard to get rid of and once affected it might take a long time for the people affected by it to recover so this was about the ashelminthus now coming to the phylum Annelida. Now these annelidin uh, members are, um, you know, these are uh, the uh, phyla that is, um, you know, um, exclusively from here the evolution has begun one can say because they have sort of a circulatory system a false sort of a circulatory system they also have a complete coelom they have a true coelom from here they are coelomated the organisms from this phylum onwards so which means these are uh, slightly advanced organisms compared to the rest now the annelidin members they have as i've already mentioned a 
um, hemocele okay hemocele hemocele fluid now what is hemocele see we know there are uh, we have blood vessels and we have the hemoglobin in us okay so what happens in the heme you know celomic hemocelonic fluid is that the celom of the uh, rather analytical body okay is composed of a celomic fluid which has a hemoglobin or such other uh, you know uh, respiratory pigments dissolved in them okay so they are hemocelomic fluids and the one thing about analida that uh, differentiates it from the rest of the phyla is that the metameric segmentation okay metameric segmentation is the outside correspondent um, annuli annuli is the ring like structure on the outside of the analidan body corresponds to the septa that is the inner compartmentalization of the analidan body so they you know they correspond okay they are similar therefore each segment is different and each segment is said to have a part of the you know all of the systems except the reproductive system all of the systems part is present in each of the you know segments of the body okay metamers they are called therefore metameric segmentation each of the segment is a metamer okay and this is exclusive to the analidan phylum okay now there are many examples of the analidan phylum that also do not exhibit any metamerism you know per se but for the most members metamerism is a, a trait now how do um, analidans move now there is a you know need for analidans to move okay because analidans are they are not parasitic they are free dwelling organisms okay and they are worm like mostly okay they are marine they are even terrestrial okay except area i think they are marine and terrestrial therefore they need they need you they, they need to move so one one of the classic examples of analidan is an earthworm if you remember ferritima okay ferritima postuma the earthworm is the classic examples now there is a um, you know a structure called the setae setae that are responsible for the movement in analidan members okay and also the setae where they are not present is replaced by another projection like uh, locomotory organ called the parapodia okay that podium means feet paris you know like so parapodia feet like things that are present instead of setae in some of the members okay and they are responsible for locomotion now based on presence of uh, kete the, the setae also determines the basis of classification of these members now let's look into it one after another polychaetae now as the name suggests polychaetae are those which have multiple setae in them or a lot of setae in them and the examples include miris okay sabella sabella is also called the peacock worm actually it is a sea dwelling worm sabella okay so polychaeta is many setae present on the body on the outside of the body oligochaeta is only a few setae present on the outside of the body and the classic example for this is ferritima ferritima is nothing but the earthworm ferritima postuma is the classic earthworm or farmer's friend okay now next class is hirudine now hirudine actually do not have any setae okay they lack any setae because they are something you call leeches like you you know all of us know how leeches move right they have longitudinal muscles all annelids have longitudinal muscles along their body which enable them to move so hirudine one of the examples is hirudo okay hirudo hirudo is one of the examples one of the leeches okay so hirudine exclusively contains leeches now what do leeches feed on all of us know they are blood sucking annelids okay so they have a series of hooks okay on near their mouths and they have also as i have already you know told you there are sensory um, you know things like you know tactile uh, sensitive things okay that are surrounding the mouth okay that enable them to hook on or clamp on to the 
uh, host's skin and make punctures and suck the blood. So, hirudo. So, hirudine is leeches and they are sanguivorous. Sanguivorous are those that are exclusively blood feeding. Now, archaeanalidae, one of the examples is Dinophus, no Dinophus, Archie. What does Archie mean? Archie means old. So these are one of the most primitive annelidans that are there. And these are mostly marine, sea dwelling um, worms. And one of these examples is Dinophus. And the Echuridae. Now, the thing about Echuridae is these are not segmented worms. There is no external or internal segmentation in these worms. Okay. One of the examples is Echinurus. Okay, there is no uh, internal or external segmentation in the case of these worms, and the other uh, rest of them have an internal and an external segmentation. And sometimes the internal and external segmentation may not match, but sometimes they do. In the case of uh, Archaeanalidans, the external and the internal segmentation matches, whereas the rest to the external and internal may or may not match. Praveen, 